Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Boys in the Cave podcast, the podcast that aims to bring to attention certain ideas, perspectives, and opinions on issues and opportunities concerning the Muslim youth. My name is Akib, and joining me in this podcast is my fellow co hosts, Josh and Tanzim. This is episode zero, where we want you listeners to get to know us a bit more, and in turn, we can get to know you better through your engagement on our social media platforms and your episode ratings and feedback. We're really excited to have you on board and inshallah what we say is beneficial. So without further ado, come step into the cave. The boys are here. The boys are here. The boys are here. And we're official. Boys, how are we doing? Yeah, alhamdulillah. I'm not too bad. Last night, just um, you guys heard about um, Baytown Poetry Slam. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I've been a couple of times. I've been with you, mate. <laughs> Don't stop acting. Like how was, you. How, how was been... last night? How was last night? Ah, uh, yeah, bro. Like um, it was pretty good. Um, a good mate, Raf, went up. And he did some stuff. It was pretty good. But um, there was one in particular. Like for people who haven't been there, um, it's basically people just go up and say poetry, but they get to say it basically on any topic they want. 50% like I'd say 90% of the time is political yeah then there'll be like those actually no maybe 80% political 10% just about love and heartbreak and the other 10 <laughs> is like just anything like religion and whatnot but uh, last night um, there was one like performance right at the end it was about like Tawakul and Allah and wow, yeah. life test and it just got you in the feels you know there's um, hijabi sisters that are really electric with how they present yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah it's like one of those yeah yeah, yeah. and then it's just like it hits you in the souls so, yeah bro. yeah that was good yeah bro but the poetry slam thing like before i used to think it was a bit cringe and like it was like like it doesn't really affect me or impact me oh yeah but then when i went in person i was like no this is actually very like it's a different creative outlet and it actually does like sort of like affect you in a different way to like music or anything would or like a lecture or something does it's like its own niche thing like i really see the appeal with a lot of people it, it Before I was like, oh, it's just like a bit, um, it's a bit awkward. It's like not really like my style sort of thing. But yeah, uh, I definitely will be going in the future as well. And like even during like the times of the Sahaba and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi like poetry was like a yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Well. If you look at it from that perspective, it's like that's the mode of delivery that we used back in the day, as exactly. in to convey like impactful messages. And that's a, that's that's another thing. Like it really resonates with the heart because when like when something is delivered in that form, it just has a different effect, you know? Exactly, yeah. So I grew up with watching, you know, Def Jam, poetry <laughs> slams, and you have all these like rappers and artists and political thinkers from uh, based in America, they were, and also the Latin America, they were speaking their minds, and you saw how raw the messages were, everybody was feeling yeah, it. Yeah, it was just a space yeah, yeah. that they can just be unadulterated and just let out their emotions and everybody there in the environment was feeling it so it was kind of like that right the bank like poetry slam. The, the i think with the poetry slam format it's like it's a bit conversational as well ah, it's not like okay. you have to go verse by verse which is what rapping is more like yeah it has to stick to a structure this is more free flow and they use different effects like they pause and stuff like that it's That's pretty awesome. it's pretty awesome like you should check it out and the distinct yes. thing is more with I guess when Def Jam would be like when black people are rapping it's about the struggles and white versus black and stuff like that whereas whereas it's for local with us it's like you know we we go through the we struggles we have different struggles yeah. yeah yeah with the society and Muslim and Islam and the identity and stuff so that yeah, it resonates more so it hits you you understand exactly because it's, it's relevant to our context yeah Whereas with them, it's the struggle of the African Americans in heavy days. America, yeah. Um, so, boys, let's talk about episode zero and what it's all about. Firstly, the people when they hear our name, they might be thinking, "What's that all about? Where does that come from?" So, let's talk about that. Uh, basically, in terms of you know who we are, and yeah, yeah, where yeah. I so, am. Um, my name is Tanzan, basically, and you know I went high school, Sydney Tech. I go to UNIS W, I'm just a uni student, you know, um, being Muslim obviously in the West is a bit different compared to most people, uh, most other religions and nationalities and stuff, and so basically, you know, I want to be part of this simply because, you know, it gives you an outlet, you know, I'm not like, I don't full study, you know, Islam and whatnot, I just take as I, you know, as I learn and just learn from brothers around me and read here and there, inshallah, alhamdulillah, so that's basically my story, but what about you, Josh? Yeah, not too different to you, bro. As in, like, I've got, like, as for a brief background of myself, like, in terms of studying the Dean seriously, I haven't really. I've been to classes, like, here and there, 
for a couple of months just learning your basic like fiqh and aqidah stuff like that mm. but in terms of my background like I study arts and humanities my major is philosophy and history so that like gives me like a different perspective on how I view things yeah. like within the community and in society and I can sort of bring that angle to a lot of the discussions we have and like I'm not we're not professionals or anything I think the whole idea we discussed before is that we're just a bunch of uni brothers who are trying to figure things out and come to an understanding of different key issues that we face living here yeah. living in this society and so we're trying to grapple with it just as much as the listener is yeah. so we're not trying to provide any authoritative like viewpoint on this is how you should think about something Absolutely. but we we want to sort of join that conversation and help push it forward as to how like how we sort of understand it ourselves Absolutely. and so my name is Akib I am my background in university is information systems and economics. Um, so my appeal in joining this project is kind of solving problems. So for me, I've been growing up solving problems for corporate um, start problems, uh, business related issues. So it's interesting to come back and acknowledge that you know the Muslim Ummah have problems, and it's important for us as you know people that are living in the West to. You know, be able to acknowledge what's yeah, yeah. happening in the reality and also to be able to contribute with our yeah, own yeah. skills and perspectives to better the people around us. So I feel like this is an cha- interesting challenge for me to come yeah. and step up towards. And so um, just a bit more about myself. So I recently was part of a software startup It's called Ingenesis. Um, unfortunately, I had to leave that because my expectations weren't being met. So for example, the projects that I wanted to be involved with, um, so product management, that kind of field, they didn't acknowledge that for me at the moment. Uh, So they wanted to become more of an incubator program. So I was kind of in a situation where I had to kind of pause with my career development. And in, at the same time, I got in touch with the brothers here. Yeah, yeah, we were talking right. over, we were talking at the cafe random at, at one <laughs> night, and we we're just like, "Wouldn't it be awesome if we did a podcast?" And bro, that just clicked. Everybody was on the same page. Yeah, yeah, moment. definitely. And so, just just what you were saying about how just having this sort of platform in the West, I feel like it is available in the West. Like, there's a lot of great sort of initiatives in America and the UK. Yeah, like the Mad Mom Looks, the brothers. There. Shout out to the Mad yeah, Mom Looks. Yeah, they've really helped us out in sort of ha- having some idea of how to get this thing started. And what we want to do is sort of have that sort of relevance, particular to us here in Sydney, Sydney, yeah. Australia, and the the sort of specific things we face that may be different to what Muslims in America face or the UK, which is what we have most experience with because it's the English speaking Muslim world, right? Yeah. As in that's what like our sort of culture is from. So that's sort of what we want to do. Of course, awesome. So who wants to talk about the name? What's the name all about? Boys in the Cave, so... Such a good name, but... Yeah. <laughs> I remember when we came up with it, it was like, we sat down, and we were just like, tr- thinking really hard what <laughs> name it should be, and it was like, Food for Fajr was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, okay, it's going to sound a bit weird, because we're not going to do podcasts at, at Fajr after Fajr, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah, so that name in particular, we realised it resonates with our idea, simply because the story itself, people in the cave, for people who haven't... Um, not too familiar with the story it's just basically a bunch of guys uh, young men who lived in a time where you know it was basically shirk everywhere mm. and they stuck to their religion steadfast you know belief in one god but they got persecuted by basically darkness who ruled over the people at that time and so when they got persecuted they left everything and I think that's like Tawakal basically and they retreated to outside of the city in a cave and they kind of stayed away from the temptations and everything because they stuck by, okay, we've got to worship on God. Yeah. And, you know, because they had that faith in Allah, Allah protected in the sense that they put them to sleep for many, it was, I think, 300 years approximately. And so Allah basically protected, gave them a miracle. They're not like prophets or anything. They're just like normal boys. And I think that resonates with yeah, us. Yeah, definitely. That's such a great metaphor, bro, because we're just like a regular bunch of boys. We're not claiming to be speaking on any issue like in a way that most of anybody else we're trying to speak to would be able to it's like we're not trying to be on a different level to anyone but we're sort of like that's how we are in this society we sort of have to retreat into our own space to have that conversation Absolutely. Exactly. and we're just we're just doing our best with the environment around us and we're asking Allah to provide us with the means to stay upon the guidance in this world of corruption and oppression because like end of the day it's like 
the society we live in, it pushes us to do things like, for example, you know, um, simply like even women wearing hijab, you know, it's like, oh, why are you putting the hijab on? Like, you should be taking it off. It's free and freedom, whatnot. It's like you're in that society, it's pushing you to do that. So we feel like the conversation should be had that, okay, if you have faith in Allah, then that's what you should worry about. And that's what basically those people in the cave did. You know, they just worried about Allah first and society second. Yeah, exactly. And interestingly, if we look at it from an outside perspective on this story, uh, you, you would acknowledge that if people from the outside were looking inwards to the people in the cave, they would be thinking like things like, oh, you know, they won't survive that long in the cave. They'll eventually have to come out and get food and, you know, so they, exactly. yeah, this, yeah. they had that attitude of just dismissing the youth and their, uh, oh, their okay, doing, yeah, right? Yeah. So I felt like, you know... So there's that element of, like, divine providence as well as in where Allah will help you in that situation when you're sort of being rejected from society when you try to live by your own principles and not just in the dunya but inshallah in the yeah, afterlife yeah, yeah, inshallah. Well. and I feel like a good takeaway point is that you know the potential of the youth especially the ones with taqwa and uh, tawakkul in Allah is underestimated and the youth's problems are undermined I feel like that's a very good takeaway from uh, what we've been discussing yeah, definitely for sure. so that gives you a background on the name what's each of your personal motivations to be a part of this podcast? Um, I would say for me, my motivation was more so um, related to just what I've mentioned before, like as in, as Muslims, we're not living in an ideal society that sort of is conducive to us having our best practice yeah. as Muslims. Do you get what I mean? As in, yeah. the like even the way we think about the world is totally not what like traditionally how we should be thinking about things okay and we'll see where i think we're no different to society in many ways we're sort of we do the same things as the people around us and we live we have the same lifestyles as them so what is what is it that makes us different as muslims okay and it's pretty much comes down to how we view the world and our thoughts and what's inspired me has been a lot of the scholars that have sort of made clear for us these like ideologies in the modern world and how they shape yeah. shape how we do things sort of subconsciously and how people generally live live their lives without any real purpose or meaning that sort of thing okay. and that's what I, that's what I want to sort of continue on with this project is sort of how do we articulate the deen and Islam in a way that makes it relevant for us in the West and how we can implement that because like there's always that disconnect you hear about the religion yeah but you have no sense of how it connects to your daily life yeah and like how is the sharia like relevant to us and how do we connect with it and uh, sort of stick with that tradition so we sort of need that platform where we can bring it all together because at the end of the day it's like every generation is different every I generation is different so you the unknown who mentioned that like you should raise your kids according to the generation living because if you uh, teach them the way you've lived and enforcing your kids it's not going to work because they live in different generations like for example right now we're in the technology age you know YOLO and swag and whatnot. <laughs> whereas the gener older generation they're not accustomed to that kind of you know way of life yeah. so with me in particular my um, motivation would be just when I basically started practicing the Dean I was I really loved like watching people like on YouTube and stuff okay. I think it was inspirational like first person like Zaki Naik and then Ahmed did that so I like I think he influenced me in the sense that we can have a platform and con conversate about these kind of things you know yeah. because Christians were like dominating back then and so uh, Ahmed did that came out onto a platform just like there's these flaws and stuff and we want to address it we want to have a conversation so that appealed to me a lot and then slowly um, when I built my foundations and started practicing well, I looked into more specific stuff and then uh, my focus kind of went towards people like uh, intellectuals like um, Muhammad Gilan and then now at the moment it's like him and Aira and um, you know shout out to them because they're doing good work in London and stuff like that yeah. and most of those IO boys um, they're also involved with a thing called Speakers Corner if you can just type Speakers Corner on YouTube yeah. Speakers Corner UK it's um, yeah it's really good and I think that helped me in the Dawah scene in the sense that you can witness people giving Dawah and you can see the approaches and take in a bit and learn yeah. and so that that's also another platform where you get your ideas and you can see that oh, okay this is islam this is you know other religions and how does it stand you know what i mean yeah definitely. and so that was basically a big mo like i learned like from muhammad hijab and all the other boys out there yeah. um 
how Islam can be portrayed. Islam can be portrayed logically. Like um, one of the guys, his name should be. I, I don't think he's well versed Islamically in the sense that he knows all this specific fiqh and aqidah. He just goes in with pure logic and you can tell he destroys, like, I wouldn't say it's me versus them mentality, but yeah. he can tell that his points are so, like, good because yeah. he's just going with pure logic. And at the end of the day, um, Islam, like, um, there's a void, uh, verse in Surah Al-Kahaf, it's like the opposition can't refute you and win because they're on falsehood anyway and you have the truth. So as much as they can try to beat you, they can't because they have, they're on the falsehood and you have the truth anyway. So that really resonates with me. And so with this Dawa scene and all that, I realize with this podcast in particular, we have kind of a slight issue where the youth aren't as engaging in this kind of setting. And then we, we can't, there's not like people caring towards the youth specifically because we go through certain struggles that maybe the older generation don't understand. And all those older generation people run the organizations and so, you know, we can talk yeah. about things like, you know, whatever, gender interaction and uh, sports and all this general stuff sure. and relate back to Islam and see how Islam exactly. can be. Like, because you can, you're living in a certain society where it tells you how to live your life, right? right. Just go school and this, that. And then it, it doesn't, Islamically, like, where's the conversation, right? Absolutely. Islam, like, basically runs and puts the foundations on my life and no when it's from Allah it's the truth right so it's best through this outlet where we can portray that okay through our lives we implement Islam it's actually the best way you know because Allah is decreed it for us okay. so um, we alhamdulillah like we have all these other YouTube uh, channels out there like in Australia that are doing good work yeah, um, just, One Path and stuff like so that so just Steve W yeah. yeah 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 so you know I even like Safina Society so shout out to Back all of them doing the like States, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're doing like great work and stuff and alhamdulillah we just want to do a different outlet kind of thing yeah pretty much the same same sort of thing as they're doing but even more sort of like like on the ground sort of thing like connecting because yeah, yeah, sure. like we know what it's like to be like young and in uni or in the msa that sort of thing and the struggles right. people face specifically that's so like that's just what we want to do i agree with and you. just to mention about one path you were saying like like you'd think one path is just like they're just down the road from here as in where the studio is yeah, yeah, yeah. and the sort of brothers I know quite a, like a few of the brothers involved there and like the impact they've had is like tremendous you don't realise it but this one initiative in Australia you see it gets like thousands of shares from like oh, yeah. people in the US and the UK it's pretty busy they, 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 it's like yeah. fresh for them the way like we have our pump up speakers in Australia is, they don't have anything like that in the States yeah. it's like it just impacts them in a way that they don't have so it just goes to show how like there's different platforms from different parts of the world yeah. impacts people you wouldn't have any idea like and we want to impact people in this way exactly yeah so, yeah, yeah. But you keep I agree up. with what both of you guys have raised, uh, the need for you know, a Dawa initiative that comes from the youth to the youth and also a better platform for us to engage with one another in terms of giving each other confidence in reflecting and also practicing in the, the Deen, right? So I want to quote uh, Paolo Coelho in this regard because you guys mentioned conversation and I feel like that's super important. So he said, Paolo Coelho said, the most important thing in all the human relationships is conversation. But people don't talk anymore. They don't, sit, they don't sit down and, t- and talk and listen. They go to the theatre, the cinema, watch TV, listen to the radio, read books, but they never, almost never talk. So if we want to change the world, we have to go back to a time where warriors would gather around a fire and tell stories. So it's one of that. That's like crazy that, stuff. I feel like yeah. that captures yeah. the essence of what we're trying to present to uh, among ourselves and to the listeners. We need to have this open and non-confronting means of conversating these important issues yeah. in our lives. Otherwise, what happens is that we're indoctrinated with all these um, foreign ideas uh, relative to Islam, yeah. right? So, and we constantly grow up with that. So, you know, consider this, like you, we go to high school for how many hours, and then we go to uni for how many hours, and then we go to full-time work, and we're always bombarded with all these like, Western ideas. There isn't, um, on average, a particular you know, other than say Juma prayer, you know, but apart from that, there's no like consistent, you know, means of you actively reflecting and, you know, thinking about your deen, right? Like whether you're doing the right thing in the week or, you know, with the youth especially because they're bombarded with all these like luxurious ideas and all these glitz and glamour, this, uh, this outlet is particularly important and necessary so we can be able to listen to the youth's struggles and concerns. So yeah, that's my motivation. You know how, this. like you just said, the Paolo dude. Yeah. Um, 
like in terms of even just reading, I don't think we do that. You know what I mean? We don't do any of that. So yeah, it's like really even worse than the situation he <laughs> stated. So you know, we have to do even a more of a bigger role to him. even like listening to something like this on the way to work. You know, it could just open up your mind in a different way. You know, and exactly. And yeah, it's it's food for thought for you to like kind of mm. reflect on and then get get other information. Exactly, you can reach yeah. out to people that are more knowledgeable, and then it gives you more of a momentum to you know engage with the thoughts and process of yeah like it percent, yeah? just extending what Tanzan was saying as well like it's such a good point like um in this society like we all these things occupy our time and yeah. don't give us the opportunity for conversation or dialogue like like you watch tv or you go to the movies or even listen to music like it's just like it f- fills your brain with like something else yeah like this blase noise in the background that sort of prevents you from having conversations yeah so definitely that's a great quote i think yeah awesome so boys, the listeners, let's be honest, the listeners make me think like, why should I listen to the boys in the cave? What makes them qualified to talk about the matters of the theme? <laughs> so let's, let's break it down for them. Like, I would say, you don't have to, but... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have just to. Just fair no. game? Yeah. <laughs> nah, like, as I said, um, we're just the youth and, you know, even someone like, I guess the youth are very underrated in some ways or another. And... Even like Ali Radiyanan, who, who was so young and was part of uh, basically the Sahaba, right? Yeah. And think about that, like even there's a hadith, um, as I'm listening to Yasika Adi Sira, he's just like, you know, um, Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam, like they're both prophets and they were brothers, right? Yeah. And so they were both kind of, it's like Prophet Muhammad salam said to Ali Radiyanan, who you're like, uh, me and you are like Harun and Musa alayhi salam. So wow. it's like oh, yeah. that closer with a guy that's so young in the youth and I feel like obviously not just every youth who like just not get every youth on board but the people are genuinely out there to do what they do I feel like that needs to be some sort of qualification in in itself that you just need to have that in you right but in terms of me personally like uh, I didn't mention this before but I go to UNSW and I study commerce and science and basically being, you know, I didn't study under a sheikh or do readings and I do readings here and there, watch lectures, taking what I know. Alhamdulillah, I'm blessed in the sense that I live near MIA. And so, you know, bump into all the sheikhs and then you can go to the talks, you know, Abu Ishaq, uh, Ustad Bizri, Shout and, and, Ustad yeah, Bizri yeah. and Abu Adnan. And like, you know, you, you hear and you take in and, you know, if you hear something, you go home, you look into it more when they talk about certain scholars back in the past and the... Tabiun and all of the other, you know, older scholars and stuff. So it's really interesting. That's how I basically do my kind of um, learning and stuff like that. But, but they're pretty accessible, though. The the Shuyu uh, MA are very accessible when we have concerns and if we want to clarify points that they've raised or if we have our own points of clarification that we need from our own reading. So that's a good outlet. Exactly. MIA is the place in Liverpool, right? It's yeah, like yeah. your local Marquez Imam local Ahmed. Muslim. You can meet me there. I'll <laughs> come here. Oh, James. James. <laughs> Dougie's next door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, as for me, like, um, my background, like I've stated with my studies and stuff, like, it gives me sort of some grounding in sort of the academic fields. Yeah. And sort of those ideas that we have there. I don't like, by no means anything serious, but I sort of, I sort of understand where a lot of it comes from. Awesome. And as for my experience with Islam, like I've taken classes here and there and I've got experience with sort of the different groups in the, the Sydney community here. Yeah. You have the more political ones, then you have the more spiritual side ones as well. And yeah. I feel like it's good to sort of have that like exposure to different groups. So you have that synthesis yeah. in yourself to sort of come to a, like a understanding of what it is that yeah. these different perspectives have to offer. So yeah, that's pretty much me and um just wanted to add like us boys when what i said earlier like us boys we're not trying to present something as this is fact for you or this is um how you should think about certain things but we're just trying to initiate the discussion like we'll talk about different things like different problems we have in society like gender interaction hopefully in the future music that sort of thing just things that people are like there's a lot of vagueness about and we don't want to present something and say this is what it is because we're not scholars or even students of knowledge by any means but we're just like what we're just like what our listeners will be like we're just like a bunch of people who are struggling to come to that understanding you know we're doing our part so, yeah. too and we're yeah exactly we're just trying to do that do our part and inshallah we'll have um those who, who are more qualified on like shuyuk and stuff like that who can sort of give us sort of the right grounding right direction these in these things and we can sort of speak to them and have any questions 
that we'd like to add to them. That's Absolutely. Yeah, 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 big guests like I uh, mentioned before, um, also Rizzi, really inshallah. Yeah, inshallah, he'll be on our podcast. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Yilan, he's very yeah. famous and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, inshallah, we're planning to get him on pretty soon, inshallah. Yeah. So, as for me, I've been part of the MSA scene for a fair few years, so I have a f- uh, some understanding of the needs and wants of the, the youth in Sydney. And I also attend a weekly halqa where I learn and discuss the fundamentals to develop myself to have uh, a strong Islamic personality and become a dawah carrier. And you know, like, like each of you guys have mentioned as well, well like, I actively seek knowledge from more scholarly and more experienced people and try to validate my own thoughts and perspectives. So, so inshallah that's kind of you know, where I stand. And also, you know, I mentioned earlier, like I, I like to solve problems. So this is an interesting kind of avenue for me to solve problems that are being faced by the Muslim yeah. youth. So just to add to that, bro, like you were saying with the MSA, like I think all of us here have been part of the MSA for a fair few years. Like as for myself, I was part of the Shura like for like two years, I think almost. And there's quite a few things you learn from them that they really help you with uh, as you sort of enter uni and the things that they shield you from. And also the things I think it may sort of get in the way of. Like inshallah we'll have other episodes where we discuss what the MSA is all about and its sort of need in the university scene and all that so yeah awesome so let's talk about you know what what are the topics and content that this podcast channel is going to cover yeah so basically we want to talk about our experiences and also link it back to islam and also talk about uh, ideas that we are faced with and also you know link that back to islam um just basically see how People have already have an idea of how the West wants to, us to live our lives, but we want to show that how Islam is it better, you know, using the principles and foundations of Islam. At the same time, you know, we do want to delve into like Islamic topics and stuff like that, where we'll have, you know, as uh, Josh said before, you know, sheikhs and as guests. And so it will basically also give uh, people who are more learned in the deen a reason to listen to this podcast as well. So it's not just for basically layman kind of you know youth it's also for the yeah, youth we'll, who are up there because we'll get the guests on board and inshallah yeah, have more like intellectual de- more sort of like islamic angle yeah because like it's not like oh yeah we just want to talk about you know right. how right. we live because yeah. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> you know i'm like josh doing philosophy i try to you know touch here and there about fundamentals of you know philosophy of science and stuff like that yeah, i read yeah. about that kid you know with all his stuff that he knows it all comes together so we can also have like intellectual discussions and yeah. stuff like that inshallah. Yeah, so, inshallah like I think like a large part of what we want to do is sort of reach out to who we have available to us here in Sydney because there are a lot of personalities that I think haven't been given their like an opportunity to speak on a lot of things we'd like them to speak about so whether it's various like shakes and stuff or personalities that are prominent on social media or in the community that have a lot of good things to say on different issues, mm. like whether it be sort of issues we face here, not just Islamic per se, but like like actual struggles that the community faces, or internationally how the Muslims are going, that sort of thing. And there's so much to talk about, Absolutely. or even like on the bare minimum level of lifestyle and how we should be conducting ourselves as Muslim, like mm. with things like I don't know, like physical activity when going to the gym how you should dress just those basic things that sort of have an impact on your everyday your day-to-day as a muslim yeah that you you would think that oh how does this affect my islam and that's what we want to relay relay it back to as in we're saying a lot of these things can be crucial uh, as the fundamentals to how you live your life Mm. and your religion has something to say about that so that's what we want to link it all back around to an awesome point yeah and also yeah just like the, what affects our daily lives like the current affairs our own personal experiences and you know in general reflecting on the history you know based on relevance on the human condition you know like talking about the Sahaba and how they dealt with their issues they were facing yeah, at their yeah, time yeah. so things like that will have it open up awesome and so I want to touch on like each of the points that you guys are really excited about the most for this project um, with me you know, I just want to get my kind of background out into the platform and get people to relate to it. I think that's the biggest thing where I guess people are different in the sense that it depends where exactly what suburbs you grow up grew up in and what people you hang with. That shapes a lot of who yeah, you definitely, are. Definitely. Yeah. And so 
to get my story out there and say, okay, this guy, you know, might have struggled in some ways and others trying his best. Okay, let's just listen to this, get his point of view and maybe he can shape your life, inshallah, for the better, right? So just basically sharing struggles in a sense as well and seeing that, okay, you know, some people, depending on where they grow up, they see Islam as just kind of this backward thing. But alhamdulillah, when you have the truth, you know, you'll see that so much things in you know islam has such a rich history right whether it be through the islamic golden age or through the scholars itself you know ibn Taymiyyah and imam ghazali all the great stuff they've done it's like if you tap into that kind of things of uh, study what they've done it's like subhanallah like what this thing islam is such an amazing thing and i feel like us having this platform to talk about is what I'm most excited about yeah, and having absolutely. guests on board to expand more of those mm. kind of ideas inshallah yeah I think so. you've mentioned before Tanzim like you've got a lot of like mates and family friends and stuff that live at West so that gives you access to I think a different audience that you want to reach out to exactly sort of thing and Josh you have the East to kind of uh, sort of them. not really the see, East, that, East that, West <laughs> <laughs> see it's, it's like yeah that's that's another thing like there's different dynamics in our community as in different if you grew up in different areas you have different levels of understandings of religion and most probably different levels of religi- religiosity as well as yeah. and there are things that are outside of your control and we're trying to sort of bridge that gap through this conversation like yeah. how can we sort of have that common meeting point yeah. yeah and i think like what's the what i want listeners to get out of this podcast is that you know how sometimes you just have those conversations with a group of friends and you really wish that you could replicate them with other people and just let other people know as in like there are really like profound conversations you have that sort of change how you view the world on how you conduct your life we sort of want to emulate that for the listeners like on the topics of islam and related issue and how it impacts your everyday life and there are just like there's just some moments that are really spiritually uplifting that i've had in certain conversations with people and Inshallah, I just want to bring that out. Yeah, discussing topics until two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, exactly, yeah. Awesome. And for me, it would be, yeah, just to do our part to you know, help raise awareness and bring our perspectives on issues and opportunities that affect the Sydney youth particularly because we have that understanding. Of, we've been observing and we've been kind of listening on and different concerns and opportunities around. And also... For me personally, just as a means of giving dawa and learning, uh, learning different perspectives from more knowledgeable people, putting ourselves yeah. out there like, hey, look, we're putting these perspectives out there, validate us. Like, what do you guys think? Are we on the right path? Or yeah, yeah. Are we saying things that you know can be molded in a better way? Things like that. Yeah. It, it's a good, it's a good fast track path mm. to seeking knowledge as well. And yeah. you know, and subhanallah, you know, us living in Sydney. We may be, you know, blind to certain experiences and perspectives yeah, we due, definitely due to our yeah. privilege, you know, living yeah. in, you know, an established country with an established system and everything, right? And alhamdulillah, our parents did such an awesome job to give us an, a great upbringing. And so, you know, it's important that we kind of utilize these uh, resources and skills that we we've have, accumulated yeah. and in order to just give back to the community, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. just as a final point, like what we were saying about society and the different parts of the different segments of the community like i feel like what we aim to do is sort of cut across all the different like experiences that people have grown up with and provide sort of a relevance that they can connect to whether you're brought up in a strictly religious household whether your family wasn't that practicing and that shaped how you view the dean and everything we sort of want to give that relatability and not come off as like we're trying to push a certain perspective or a certain agenda that really like we want to distance ourselves from that sort of um, what do you call it um, narrow casting as much as possible because that's not our aim here it's to get as many people on board as possible inshallah yeah alright so thank you for listening this has been episode zero if you have any questions or comments you can email us at boysinthecave at gmail.com check us out on Facebook or follow us on Instagram and all that good stuff and so from Tanzim, Josh and myself we wish you all the best This is Akib signing off. Assalamu alaikum.